Hello, this is Benjamin from the Eclipse Foundation. I'm here today at the Eclipse Conference in Toulouse, second edition of Eclipse Conference, and I'm on the Beat Reactive booth. Uh, Beat Reactive is like actually an Eclipse member uh, yeah. and a member of our IoT working group. So I'm here today with Frank Alexander Kramer and Anne Nevin. Uh, so we um, we actually see uh, very cool hardware on that booth, and maybe Frank, you can uh, very quickly introduce what is Bit Reactive. Yeah, so Bit Reactive is a company that builds reactive blocks. That's a modeling tool and programming tool for building uh, quite complex um, applications on M2M gateways in in Java. So it's a, a Eclipse-based tool. You can see here we create applications from building blocks that come from libraries. Uh, and they run, as I said, on, on gateways. And uh, there we have some, some examples for gateways. Here, for example, that's uh, from Option, the cloud gate. We have from Eurotech, the Relia gate. There's also a development kit from Sierra Wireless. And we have the Galileo board from Intel. And of course, here we have the Raspberry Pi with a GERD board. We will come later back to that. Okay, and our demo is uh, pretty simple. Uh, we upload some data that we collect here from some sensors and some actuators via an Arduino over Modbus and a serial interface. Um, and we put that into a serial wireless uh, development kit. Uh, and from there, we upload it into the cloud. Okay, now the interesting thing with all of these gateways is that they are getting very, very powerful. So that means that we can build applications that can even work when the network is down because, uh, well, we can make local decisions and we can buffer a lot of data. The problem is that uh, such applications are getting very, very difficult to make for programmers that are not used to concurrent programming. So you need to take a lot of uh, things into account that happen at the same time. Okay, let's have a look how this application looks now in reactive blocks. So this is basically a visual programming environment, right, for yes. uh, any kind of IoT applications, I guess. So I see some Correct. building blocks and Arduino interface. So is this like for reading the GPIOs of the Arduino? Exactly. So we have here composed a very simple application consisting of three building blocks. This one is simply reading in a configuration uh, that we later need for accessing the server and uh, some things of the Arduino. And when we start up the system, we are starting that block, we're getting these values in a map, and then you see we are starting up two other building blocks. One is the Arduino interface, I will show you that in a, in a second, and the other one is a building block to publish data into the cloud. Okay, now these building blocks are graphically, however, I can double click here on the Arduino interface, and then you see it decomposes uh, into another building block, and that one contains a periodic timer here, over there, to the left, and it in also includes a building block for having access uh, to Modbus. So we are transporting all the data from and to the Arduino via uh, the Modbus protocol. And the other elements here, they are Java operations. So whenever I have something specific uh, for my application, here for example I want to get the port parameters, I can double click here and that corresponds to a Java method. So, in a way, it's a programming uh, uh, environment, but it uses graphics um, for all the parts that have with uh, concurrency and synchronization to do, and we generate the code for exactly those parts. So, and this is, anyways, code that you don't want to uh, write yourself. And, and so, is this generating code, or is this more like of a configuration kind of tool? Are you really, yeah, what kind of... It's really happening after I have actually written my blocks. And yes. So, from this graphical representation of the building blocks, you really generate code. So, what you get in the end? What, what programming language? In Java. Okay. Yeah. What you get in the end is a self-contained Eclipse project, a Java project that contains all the code that comes from your building blocks as well as the code that we have generated. Okay. And are there any? Is there? Do I need anything else than the Java virtual machine for running a uh, reactive blocks application? No, whatever runs Java will run reactive blocks. Right, so that's exactly. why you showed earlier the, the Galileo, or the Raspberry Pi, and the like. You don't need external libraries, just check. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And talking about libraries, we have a lot of libraries. Uh, among them, for instance, uh, support for MQTT. So if I would like my application to speak MQTT, then I just drag the MQTT publish building block and into my application 
and now I could connect it uh, to an MQTT broker if that is what I want to do. And we plan to support more Eclipse IoT technology. Interesting. So, is this using Eclipse Power? Yes. Okay, so you're basically just wrapping the, the, the Paho APIs into a building block and people can just like call the APIs very... Exactly. So, um, and a reactive block is a Java API or a Java implementation together with an enclosing building block. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are the kind of applications that uh, you or your customers are, are building with, uh, with reactive blocks? Well, it's very suitable for m to m applications that run on more advanced and more powerful gateways where you have lots of things happening at the same time and where you need to keep track of a lot of events at the same time and it would keep a cool head yeah. when you're programming this. Okay, and so what should people do if they want to actually try you? Is this uh, an open source technology or, or what's your relationship with I mean, can, can I use that for my open source project? As long as you're developing an open source, we have a free offer for you. Okay. Okay, so for developers, we have uh, several example systems that you can download directly from our website. And uh, here you see an example for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have uh, systems that you can download and uh, copy over to your Raspberry Pi. And what you see here is uh, the first introduction to reactive blocks and uh, concurrent programming. And it's uh, Raspberry Pi connected to the GERT board and using, you can maybe blink it, Frank? Yes. yes, use the GERT board button to blink uh, the LED. And when you hold the block button in for more than five seconds, it, you shut the application down. And all these example systems are modifiable, so you can download them and play with them and make them more advanced and make some fun applications.